If you're looking for a simple to make but gorgeous front yard worthy tea trellis for your blackberries, stay tuned. I'm gonna show you how I cut, stained, assembled, and installed these bad boys. Hi guys, I'm April from Resprout where I show you how to garden like a boss. Last year, I grew 632 pounds of food in my suburban front yard, and this year I'm aiming for a thousand. I'm gonna be building two trellises, but all the quantities I'm gonna give you guys is for one trellis, just to keep everything simple. There's gonna be a full list of everything you need in the description box below, including links. Heads up, the dimensions of your blackberry trellis are going to depend on the variety of blackberry you're planting, either trailing, erect, or semi-erect. If you want some more information on the varieties and different types, check out the description box below. I'll be planting Prime Arc Freedom and Prime Arc Traveler from Stark Brothers, which are erect blackberries. These plants are four to five feet tall when mature, so I'm gonna cut two four by four posts to five feet tall. Use a speed square to keep the cut relatively square, but because the tops and the bottoms are both gonna be covered up, there's no need for pinpoint accuracy. You'll just need two end posts if your rows are less than 20 feet. If they're longer, space your posts at a minimum of every 20 feet. Next are the two by four cross arms. My blackberry varieties grow three feet wide, so I'm gonna be cutting the cross arms to three feet wide. This is a four wire trellis design, so two arms per post, four arms total for the entire trellis. Next, we're gonna notch out the posts to fit our cross arms. We want the top of the arms at the four and a half foot height and the 30 inch height. So we'll mark those points on the post and then mark the outline of the cross arms. We're also gonna mark the side with a scrap two by four. This will be our depth guide. Set the circular saw to go to this depth. We want to make a series of parallel cuts about a quarter to a half an inch apart, and then we can knock out those pieces with a chisel and clean out the waste. Now check the fit. If it doesn't quite fit, you might need to do another pass with the circular saw or a little bit more chiseling. So in the end, we should have two posts with two notches each, and they should fit our four cross arms. Now you don't have to stain your trellises, but blackberries do last 15 to 20 years, so I'm playing the long game here. And I'm also staining mine because I want to keep with the same look that I have with the rest of my trellis area. And also, because it looks cool. I would love to know if you guys are staining or painting your trellises too, and if so, what color? Leave me a comment below to let me know. I'm gonna be using this awesome eco-friendly stain from Timber Pro. This is their deck and fence formula in ebony. This is the same stain we use on our fence and all the other trellises. It's low VOC, non-flammable, cleans up with water, and is made with renewable plant-based oils. It's the only stain I would feel comfortable with around my food. If you're looking for more information, I will leave a link in the description box below. If you want to be able to stain all four sides at once, here's a trick I picked up from another awesome YouTuber. I'll link that below in the description too. I made these with scrap wood and screws, and then I was able to balance the just stained sides on the tips of the screws, and it didn't mar the finish. That way I was able to stain all four sides all in one go. I did two coats of stains, making sure to pay extra attention to the ends. Just follow the directions on your paint or stain as far as temperature or wait time between applications. And don't forget the fancy post caps. We're gonna stain those to give our trellises some extra pop. Next up, we're gonna put these bad boys together. You can use any exterior deck screw here, but I definitely, definitely recommend these spack screws. They require no pre-drilling and they definitely save on time and are worth the extra cost. We're gonna want three inch screws so that it goes through the entire post and the majority of the cross arms. Position the cross arms so that the middle point, the 18 inch point, is directly in the middle of the notch. And then screw it in with two screws on opposite corners. 
I'm gonna be installing these trellises with 30 inch post spikes. You can also dig a hole and mix concrete, but these are really easy to use. And I have a really big trellis area and I like the ability of moving around the trellises or uninstalling them if I need to. Get the post started in the right position with a mallet or hammer and attach a post leveler to a sacrificial piece of four x four. And with a socket wrench and a crescent wrench, screw the post down so it doesn't wobble. Then use a sledgehammer to drive it into the ground, checking on the level and adjusting as you go along. If you run into issues with the post splitting like we did, just hit it a little lighter, <coughs> or you can use a flat piece of wood on top to protect the post. Once you get the spike all the way into the ground, replace the sacrificial post with the assembled post we already made, make sure it's level and tighten that down. Make sure to put the arms on the outside of the post since the wires are going to be exerting a pulling force towards the inside of the trellis. Okay guys, we're almost there. We're on the home stretch. If you're still with me, comment below and say almost there. Next up, we need to pre-drill holes in both ends of the forearms. Make sure you only go halfway through. And then we're gonna screw in the stainless steel eye bolts. We'll need eight of these. If you have baby hands like me, do not feel ashamed. Pull out those pliers and a vice grips and get this job done. Now, before we get started with the wire, make sure you have a good pair of quality gloves. This stuff is super sharp. I never thought I would say this in my life, but I love this pair of utility gloves. This is from Pine Tree Tools. They are warm, they are cool, they are water resistant, they are dirt resistant, and as long as they're not super abused, the fingertips are even touch screen friendly, which is amazing. I will leave another link in the description box below if you guys are interested in those. This is the wire we want. It's 12 gauge galvanized utility wire. I got 100 feet. So when you do the math for your trellis, you wanna take your row length times it by four, since it's a four wire trellis design. And then we wanna add an extra eight feet to that number. And that's one foot for each end for waste. Someone didn't allow for waste and then she had to go shopping again. So first step, make a little curly cue at the end of the wire. This will keep it getting snagged on anything. And it's definitely easier to do it at this point than when it's already up on the trellis. For one trellis, you'll need four of these stainless steel turn buckles, one for each wire. And these will help tighten down the wires. Put the wire through the eye bolt of the turn buckle and then wrap it around the wire a couple times. If you look closely at the turnbuckle, there's an L and an R on it, and those are the directions you want to turn the turnbuckle to loosen it. It's a little confusing at first because both sides aren't the same. Both sides are not righty-tighty, lefty-loosey like you would think. We want to unscrew this completely before we start the installation. Hook the turnbuckle into the eye bolt of the cross arm on one side, and then unroll the wire to the opposing cross arm on the other end. Then cut the wire with a pair of wire cutters or wire snips. It's super important to control both ends of the wire on either side of the cut because once you cut it, they will go flying and it's super dangerous. Now, as you guys remember, I have baby hands. So I ended up standing on both sides of the wire with my feet so that I could use both of my hands to cut the wire. Run the wire through the eye bolt and then loop it around a couple times, just like we did with the other side. Then tighten the turnbuckle so that the wire is moderately taut. Don't over tighten it though, because you might run into the same problem I did, where the wires were pulling so much it pulled the post off level. If that happens, loosen the wire, re-level, and then re-tighten the post. And of course, you guys know I love my garden bling, so make sure you add those post caps to finish off the trellises. My goal here at Resprout is to make gardening easier, more productive, and more gorgeously front yard worthy. So I hope this video helped you get closer to that today. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button down below. And if you have any tips or questions, let me know in the comments. Be sure to subscribe below for more garden tips and tutorials. And if you know anybody who would be interested in this video, feel free to share it on social media. And I would love to stay in touch, so please sign up for my email newsletter here. Keep gardening like a boss and I'll see you guys soon.